Is it true that scalp tension is at the root cause of male pattern baldness? Well, more than likely, the answer is yes. And it all starts with a layer of the scalp called the gallia aponeurotica. In today's video, we're going to explain what the gallia is and what it does. And we'll also present you with the two smoking guns linking tension in the gallia to hair loss. Above all, you will learn what you can do to treat the tension and reverse your hair loss. Make sure to stay tuned. So aponeurosis are a type of connective tissue found throughout the body. They are white in appearance and similar in their function to tendons. They basically serve as an attachment point for muscles to attach to the bones or cartilage. And on the top of the head, underneath the skin, sits the aponeurosis called the gallia aponeurotica, or simply gallia. Gallia was Latin for helmet, and by looking at this illustration, you can see how the gallia got its name. It basically sits like a helmet over the top part of the scalp, and it is located underneath the skin, sandwiched between the overlying skin and the skull, and it's connected to the skin through a layer of dense connective tissue. So the gallia is connected in the front to the frontalis muscle, and in the rear to the occipitalis muscle. On either lateral side of the head over the ear area is flanked by other muscles. Now, I'm not gonna bore you to death with the names. You can see the various muscles that border the gallia in this illustration. The large white space on the top is the gallia. So guys, when I look at this, one thing comes to mind, Norwood, seven. If you blot out the frontal muscle, which doesn't have hair over to begin with, you're left with this. Imagine that the stripy areas are hair instead of muscles, and you're more or less looking at a Norwood 7. A Norwood 7 is somebody who's advanced to the last stage of androgenetic alopecia and will lose no more hair. So it's clear that hair loss happens only in regions overlying the gallia. When you've lost all your hair over the gallia, you've progressed to a Norwood 7, and you won't lose any more hair. The hair that's located over the occipital muscle region won't fall off, and neither will the hair on either side of the gallia, which is also over muscle. Could this be a coincidence? Well, I have to tell you that if it is a coincidence, it sure is a massive one. But what about the pattern of hair loss? Why do we start balding at the front first at the temples, followed by the recession of the entire frontal hairline? And why is this then followed by hair loss in the crown and eventually the whole top of the head? Why is there such a remarkable consistency in pattern hair loss? Well, the answer to this might come from a 2015 paper published in the International Journal of Trichology. The paper is titled Involvement of Mechanical Stress in Androgenetic Alopecia, and it basically simulates the mechanical stress exerted on the gallia by the muscles that it's connected to. Because remember, the function of the gallia is to serve as an attachment point to muscles. In doing so, it also absorbs the pressure and tension from the action of these muscles. But the gallia is also firmly attached to the overlying skin by a rigid subcutaneous layer, meaning any tension in the gallia is transmitted to the overlying skin. So the study modeled the forces exerted on the gallia by the frontal muscle in the front and the occipital muscle in the rear. And you can see the results in this graphic. Areas in light blue are those with the highest tension. Darker blue areas have less tension. We can see that the highest tension areas are at the frontal hairline and the temples, and that's closely followed by the crown, which closely matches the progression of male pattern baldness. We can see this better if we place this graphic side by side with the Hamilton Norwood scale. The similarity is remarkable. And you can actually do a statistical test to see what the chances are of this coincidence being down to chance. And there is a less than one in 1000 probability that this is down to chance. So now essentially we have two smoking guns. A, boldness only happens in areas overlying the gallia. B, the pattern of hair loss closely matches the degree of tension in the gallia. The areas with the highest tension are the first to go. They're followed by those with intermediate levels of tension, and finally those with the least tension. The chances of this being down to mere chance are vanishingly small. So why could this be? Why does hair loss only happen over the gallia, and how does tension in the gallia lead to hair loss? Well, at this point, we're not 100% certain of the biochemical pathways involved, but it's highly likely that the chronic tension in the gallia is transmitted to the overlying skin, which leads to a chronic low-grade inflammation. This isn't a kind of dramatic visible inflammation that you can see with the naked eye, like in certain other kinds of hair loss. 
It's sometimes called microinflammation to distinguish it, but it is long term and persistent, and DHT is then activated as a response to this inflammation. So the DHT isn't itself the root cause of hair loss, but rather a secondary link in the chain. The DHT, in combination with other proteins that are activated in response to the inflammation, leads to a very slow, gradual reshaping of the scalp tissue. And the most important of these gradual changes is fibrosis. Fibrosis refers to the accumulation of excess collagen in the space surrounding the follicles. Essentially, it's microscopic scar tissue. As the fibrosis builds up around the follicles, it restricts their blood supply. And this slowly but surely deprives them of oxygen and the other nutrients that they need to thrive. Without an adequate supply of the necessary ingredients to promote their function, the follicles wither away and die. They essentially miniaturize. We recently did a video where we go into the chemistry in a little bit more detail and we break it down for you step by step. I've linked that to you in the description below. Now, the obvious question is this. If hair loss is down to the tension in the scalp, emanating from the gallia, then what can we do about it? At this point in time, there is no medication or high-tech solution for treating the tension. And given the nature of the problem, it is possible that there will never be such a solution. So we rely on the tried and tested method of scalp massages. Scalp massages relieve the tension in the scalp while at the same time promoting blood flow. And remember, it's the lack of blood flow that's ultimately to blame for the follicles miniaturizing. I've linked to an in-depth video that we've already made on scalp massages in the description below. Now, an alternative to using your bare hands to massage is using a device called a grow band. Grow bands have been gaining popularity in the hair loss community and for good reason. Because A, it addresses the root cause of hair loss and B, it is a one-time fee unlike many other hair loss treatments and C, they're easy, simple and enjoyable to use unlike scalp massages, which can be quite difficult. Now, many viewers on this channel have already invested in grow bands after they were seeing the results of scalp massage. We recommend that you do your own research when it comes to using grow bands and see if it's the right option for you. Now, our own hair guard grow band comes with a 365 day money back guarantee. So it is entirely risk free to try. So I'll link that to you in the description below. And guys, if you want to learn more about scalp massage or about Will's eight steps he used to reverse his own hair loss, then click the video on the screen now.